Hi everyone, um, this was just something that I, I'm Joel Lockie, I'm a, if I, I'll flip on the next page. So I'm a, a Power Platform Consultant at ANS Group in the UK. Been working with Power Platform Dynamics for about six years now. Um, really what spurred me doing this demo and what, what um, brought this all up was that I shared a LinkedIn post that blew up a little bit and I didn't want to leave it down to the LinkedIn algorithm to actually for people to see this. So hopefully people get some use from this today and they can actually use it on their Power Platform or dynamic solutions. So that is what it's all about. So I think as everyone knows, isn't documenting your solution a pain. It's always the worst part. If you've not done it as you go, it's always the last part. So this actually happened to me um, internally at ANS. We were, I was developing a solution um, just for the team to use internally. And had I documented any of it? Nope. So there was absolutely no context, no documentation, nothing. And then when I needed to get that uh, particular solution live, then we needed documentation, we needed testing, we needed all of these different things that just hadn't been done all the way through because it was internal and it was just meant to be, you know, on the side, side bit of work. So this got me thinking like quite quickly, right, how how can I do this that it's not going to be a brand new start? Um, at the time, ChatGPT, Claude, um, Gemini, none of them could interpret zip files. And I'm not actually sure if they can interpret zip files yet with, with GPT-5 um, coming out recently. So I sort of found this little hack and this little workaround in Visual Studio Code that I've been using ever since. It is so easy. It still uses GitHub Copilot, so there's still a little bit of Gen AI sprinkled in there. But it's been great. And this is how I now start all of my documentation for anything Power Platform related. And really, your documentation is as good as your prompting at this point. So there's a little bit of prompt engineering I'm doing here as well to try and ground things. So I'll show you what that's all about. So let me now escape out of this, and then I'm going to get Visual Studio Code up. So first things first, for anyone that has never looked inside their Power Platform solutions, before we look at all this stuff on the right-hand side, um, as you know, if you've not got full proper pipelines in place, your solution is just a load of, of um, flat files with different bits and pieces in it. So you can interrogate those files at any time that you want, you know, outside of this, if you wanted to go and sit and read through how Power Automate looks or how um, an app looks in the background, you're more than welcome to. Not for me, but at least this gives us a bit of a head up when it comes to uh, doing documentation. So first things first, in um, Visual Studio Code, Sans Pets, you can open a folder and actually just open that folder to work out of it. So um, what I've done here, I have exported my solution from Power Platform. I have then um, unzipped it and just left it where it is. So if I open up a folder here, what you will see is I've got, it's in this one here. So I've got my, my app here, which was a skills matrix. So that was all about knowing who can do what in the team, who's good at Power Pages, I presume no one who's good at, you know, all those different things. Um, so now that I've done that, if I click through, you'll see I've got web resources, I've got workflows, and there's files that sit underneath that, which basically tell the platform what to do when it comes to importing that next time round. However, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna select that folder and open that in Visual Studio Code. So now what we will get, yes, I trust the authors, because it is me. Um, obviously, trust your authors if you feel like trusting them. So now what I can see is I've got all of my different um, objects in there. I've got my solution.xml, I've got my customizations.xml, and then I've got all that other good stuff in there as well. So this is where we can get a bit funky and we can start using GitHub Copilot to generate a solution document based off of these files. Um, so as I say at the time, GPT-5 or GPT-4 point, whatever it was at the time, couldn't quite um, interpret um, zip files. But that may have changed. I'll be interested to see that afterwards. Hopefully someone gets value out of this because it should just save you time and have you a good start of a 10. So the first thing that I'm going to do, I've got my file loaded in. So I just did file and then I did open folder. Um, first things first, I need to actually let, let the, the co-pilot know and clue the co-pilot in on the fact that there's some files here that I want to get talking about. So if I add context and then go to files and folders, so you'll be very familiar with this if you've ever used GitHub Copilot. But it's maybe it's just a new funky way that you've not used it before, then I'm going to select our solution. I personally have found that Claude is the best way to get this working. 
Um, GPT-5, GPT-4.0, I've struggled with a little bit. I've certainly struggled with Brock. So um, GP, uh, Cloud Sonnet 4 has been the one that I have this working with the most. Um, and then let me paste in my prompt. Oh, that's a pasted image instead of my prompt. Let me see if I can find my prompt, more importantly. Um, it's in here somewhere. So what I've done um, is just said, create a solution design document for this Power Platform solution, having added the context in. Where the code is uh, used, display it in full. So anywhere I've got web resources or plugins, please display that in full. And if we're doing Power Automate, we need to put that in a, a sort of when, if, and then type statement. So like an if, then, if this, then that kind of statement. Um, and finally, it should be technical enough for the solution architect to understand. And this little last bit is a little bit of secret sauce I've added in because I've found that sometimes the, um, the LLM gets a bit confused around what exactly it's looking at. Is this a business process flow? Is this a classic workflow? Is this um, a real-time workflow? So what I've found to try and ground the, the, um, the prompt a bit and ground the LLM a little bit is I tend to just do a little bit of adversarial um, co-piloting. So I ask co-pilot to just generate a sentence with a snippet from the solution file within Power Platform and um, with a list of all the different objects that are in there. And that has, anyway, as far as I've seen it, just helps it ground a little bit in terms of what to expect, what it's looking for. But you can get some really cool outputs from this. And as I say, your documentation is as good as your prompt. Um, so let's run it and let's see what happens. Because sometimes it falls over, sometimes it doesn't. So let's see what happens. So I'm going to run that now. <clears throat> so what that's going to do, that's going to go and iterate over all those files. You can see it's going to read them and it'll read them 1 to 100, 100 to 168. So this is really where GitHub Copilot is, is um, it gets around any issues you have with token sizes and prompt sizes in traditional LLMs. So because it can chunk things up and actually go through each of the, the files individually, um, this is where the, the benefit comes in. So, you know, I was trying this exact same thing and all of the different in your preferred LLM tool, and it was just hitting a brick wall. It couldn't interpret certain file types. It couldn't interpret um, certain certain documents. So you can see it's going to iterate all over all over our uh, web resources there. Or I think it did work close first. Um, now it's looking at web resources and it's iterating away there. And then hopefully this doesn't fall over because it has been a little bit a little bit tricky. Um, and now it's going to look at the XAML files. But what this does is it basically builds you up a really good start of a 10 for your uh, documentation at, at the end of the project, or if you're more prepared than me, halfway through the project. So now it's going to get a complete picture of the entity. So it can take a little while this. Um, I shared the LinkedIn post with David as well, so you should, might see that in the chat, and it's got a slightly condensed version of this. Um, Hopefully this is novel and people haven't done this before because it certainly wasn't a way that I thought of doing, um, you know, using um, sort of Gen AI and LLMs to generate a solution design document. So the really good thing is it will produce this in Markdown for us. And then once that's in Markdown, we're only like a hop, skip and a jump away from pasting that into a DevOps wiki or we can prompt a bit more with, with GitHub Copilot to get back a, um, a Word document. Obviously, the same things apply, the same rules apply, the same things around check your, your Gen AI content, your, your generative output. Um, hopefully this works. It looks like it's going to, because it has actually iterated through each of the um, documents that you see on the left-hand side of the files you see on the left-hand side. And it's working, and it's working, and it's working. This is the problem with Gen AI. Is it working? Is it not? Let's see if it does. But um, this it's just been super handy, and it, it's been good to just uh, do this to refresh your memory on a solution. I know that where I work at ANS Group, you know, we support customers sometimes, so we may support systems we don't have full context around. So just downloading that zip file, unpacking it, and then generating a, a solution design document off the back of it. There you go. Right. Awesome. So now if we wanted to, we can start editing things, we can start correcting it, and we can prompt our way to having a, a much better file. So you can see it's going to give me a little bit of a, a little bit of spiel around what it's actually created, what um what it's found within the solution. So if I just keep that now, this is all in markdown. 
Um, so it's a very easy format to work with. So it's found all of those different things that I added the context and the prompt for. And what you'll also find as well is it will also sometimes, and again, that might be prompt related more so than, uh, than this particular solution, it'll go through and it will uh, produce you like an entity relationship diagram. And um, it'll also do like a bit of a process flow for what the process is through the, through the different aspects of the solution. But what that gets you is a hell of a lot closer to an endpoint than you would have had otherwise. You can see it's broken down my power automate flows and it's broken those down into sort of when, then, and ifs. Um, and it can, yeah, it's just, it's super handy. You can see we've got email template, we've got the next one. So reason I thought I'd submit for this is because I just think it's a really cool way to, um, to generate documentation at pace and quite quickly without having to do, you know, manually typing or, or some other way. So hopefully someone gets some benefit with this. You can see we've now got the JavaScript in there. Um, so it's actually pulled all that information out of, um, out of the individual files themselves. And yeah, I could easily drop this, as I say, into a DevOps um, wiki, or I can, I can prompt a bit more to get, do some things in terminal, um, which people may know on the call to convert that into a Word document. So just super handy. Um, I, you know, everyone I've showed this to, everyone that has ended up using this has been uh, really pleased with it. So hopefully people get a benefit out of it and see see the benefit and hopefully you can start using this a lot quicker. As I say, you could easily prompt your way to a better document as well. So if there are things that you feel are missing, if there are things that you have as part of your own sort of template and you want to put that in, you are slightly restricted around the attachments you can use in GitHub Copilot, but you can also obviously then reference other files as well. So if you want to convert your Word document, that is your template, into Markdown, add that in as a file, and then give the, the GitHub Copilot context to that as well, then you can use that to sort of do a bit of a comparison between what it generates and what your what your typical is. So. So yeah, that is that is quickly um, generating solution documentation using GitHub Copilot. Hopefully, people have found that useful. Um, I certainly do. I use it at least once a week now. So, so yeah, thank you, everyone. Thank you.